Hey guys! So Kevin and I are in our driveway right now in the RV and we're going to be spending the night in the RV in our driveway because we're headed out this weekend and we're trying to get the kitties all used to this new space. So I want to, I want to introduce you guys to my kitties. Oh, our kitties. <laughs> Kevin's like, oh. <laughs> all right. This is Sunshine. She's nervous. They're all nervous right now. But that's my girl. <laughs> Don't do that, Tony. <laughs> okay. And over here is Toby. <laughs> Let me turn this light on for you guys. That's the Dobies. <laughs> and then down here is Radar. Radar is the one that's having the hardest time adjusting. He cried and cried for a good half hour when we first brought him in here. But he's calming down now, and I think by in the morning he should be okay. Then over here, <laughs> somewhere, is another kitty. <laughs> Let me see if I can find her. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can get her for you. Hi, Esther. Oh, it's a big girl. <sighs> Mrs. Esther. She's scared right now. She doesn't know why I pulled her out from under there. Yeah. I'm sorry, baby. And we got one more. <laughs> <laughs> now, this guy is Boomer. <laughs> now... Boomer was my mom's kitty, and he still doesn't get along real well with the other kitties. Boomer, hey buddy. And so now he's a part of our family. He's a big boy. <laughs> he's actually lost some weight since we got him, but he's still got a ways to go. Yeah. That's Boomer. It's about time for them to eat, so we're going to start settling down, and hopefully they will settle out through the night, get used to the new space and all the little noises and the movement. You know, you have, you can, there's more movement in an RV when people walk around and such. That kind of makes them nervous. Uh, uh, Kevin, turn the light on. I bet it's really grainy in here um, on the video. But anyway... We will see you guys in the morning and tell you how they got through the night. Kevin, before we left, did a little video for you guys. Of He went through and he did all the latches, the basement storage latches on the RV. And he's going to show you guys how he did that. It's pretty bright out here. But in today's video, I'm tasked with uh, going through all these latches and trying to get them uh, lubricated and freed up. And some of them are actually missing and I'll be replacing those. And you can get these uh, replacement latches uh, for the basement storage compartments. And there's two rivets on either side and you drill those out and then you can pull this latch out. Of course, you gotta take this cover off so you can get to the uh, mechanism in there and the rod there's a rod that goes from here over to this latch so you would pull this cover off release the rod and then drill these rivets out and then you can pull this latch out put the new one in and then rivet back in place but some of these are just really gummed up uh, a lot of people lubricate these with wd-40 or or different things like that and what happens is they collect dust and dirt and everything else um, so I'm just trying to get these cleaned up a little bit as much as I can and then I mean that's already working a little bit better just getting that what stuff I like off. to use to lubricate these is um, graphite and it's dry and you just squirt a little bit inside here doesn't take a lot and you can do it on both sides if you can get in there and then as you start working it this will get looser and looser and do that every i don't know maybe three to six months or something and these latches will last a long time and, and work properly 
So another thing you can do with these latches, if you're key sticking, you can take a small flathead screwdriver, push this aside a little bit, and then squirt just a little bit of graphite down inside there, and then put your key in and work work it back and forth. And I've already done it on this one, and this thing is like working like new again. It's super easy; nothing's sticking anymore. So. If you got a sticky key, you can uh, put a little bit of graphite in that and then it should loosen it up so it, so it doesn't stick anymore. So you can see here's one that's broke. The latches broke off in there. So I'm going to drill these rivets out, take that hatch cover off, pull the rod out. We'll put the new one in and rivet it back in place and then that'll fix this latch right here. So that's what I'm going to do next. So this latch actually looks pretty good. There's not a whole lot that can go wrong with these. It's usually gonna be the, the catch out here that's gonna break or something's gonna happen to that. So here's, here's the old latch. You can see the uh, catch is broke off. Here's the new one. This one may have been replaced already once. So hopefully this thing Hopefully that's not a uh, indication of the quality of these replacement latches. But anyways, here's the replacement latch. We're going to get that put in. This is the rod that goes through the center. All right, so I don't know if you can see that, but I have the old rivet holes drilled through and I'm ready to install the new rivets for it. One thing you want to make sure you do is when you put the rod back in, make sure it's facing the correct way so it attaches to the latch handle when you're ready to install that. All right, so the new one's installed. It's nice and tight. When I'm pulling this rod, it's pulling the latch in. So now I just need to put the handle assembly back on and then this one will be fixed. So when I put these in, I like to get all of the screws started before this one's not lining up. There it goes before I tighten them. So I know everything's lined up and then I'll tighten the latch first and I'll push down on the latch handle. So that way I don't, if I, if I push up on the screw and the latch handle comes out, it takes a chance of that rod coming disconnected to the catch. So that's it for that. It took maybe uh, five or 10 minutes and you can feel that's pulling in now. This one over here is working good. And now this has both catches on both sides. I did uh, have three latches that I needed to replace. And I'm just gonna go through and clean up the rest of the other latches, get some lubrication in there so they're working better. And um, yeah, so hopefully you found some of this helpful and uh, we'll see you later. Yeah, so that's what I did with the latches. And then the other thing I did was I just kind of got up on top of the roof and uh, inspected some things, made a few small repairs, and um, we'll show you what, what I did there. So I'm up on top of the roof today. It's super windy out here, so I don't know if this is coming through okay. A couple birds just flew by. And I was just kind of looking at some different areas on the roof, inspecting, making sure everything looks good. And one thing I've noticed is this, um, this front cap right here. So if you can see that, how this is kind of coming apart right here, so I'm gonna clean this up real good and see if I can squeeze some sealant down inside there and get it to seal up good. 
Um, I'll show you this other side here. So here's the other side. This side ain't as bad, but I'm still gonna put some sealing on there and see if I can get that to seal up a little bit better. We wanna make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere. And this is something that probably should be checked periodically um, throughout the year, just to make sure that everything looks good. Another thing I noticed when I was cleaning these um, vent covers, they just have these little aluminum tab things here that screw into the side of the fan and come out and then you mount the cover to it. And the front ones were broke on both sides. And I took them off because I ordered a couple on Amazon. They should be here today and I'll be able to replace those and then screw this down properly. So it's not gonna come off. Um, so those are little things that I'll probably want to check periodically to make sure that everything's good up here. Other than that, everything looks really good. Um, they definitely kept the roof as clean as possible, I guess. I did. Cl I cleaned it myself the other day. Um, this fan, fan here, you can see, get out of the shadow. These are those tabs. Both sides are good. This one's attached down really well. So there's no issue there. All of the lap sealant looks good. Nice and solid. It's dirty. I mean, it collects dirt, but but it's everything's solid and down nice and tight, the way it should be. So I don't think there's any issues there. Here's another thing I was looking at. So I don't know if you can see that, but on a Winnebago roof, these um, membranes or whatever come down and tuck into a rail here, and they'll separate right along this this seam. So you want to make sure that this is sealed good, and this one is. It looks like somebody's maintained it, and it's nice and sealed, so nothing needs to be done there. Same thing with this back cap. This back cap looks good, nice and sealed. I noticed back here, there was a little hole in the um, lap sealant. So I cleaned that up really good and put a little bit on top to make sure that hole's filled in. I don't think it was gonna be a problem. I don't think it went all the way through, but this way I'll know it'll be it'll be okay. Nothing, nothing's gonna leak through that. So one thing I've learned in looking at these with um, Winnebago roofs, I guess the lap sealant they use from the factories like a silicone base I think so you don't want to use a die core uh, sealant because it won't stick to this so um, what I found in reading everything is they use this um, hangs I guess is how you pronounce that self-leveling uh, sealant and I guess that's the closest match to what they use at Winnebago from the factory and it'll stick to this fine. So that's what I used. So I sealed this side up and you can see this, this is the roof membrane and it comes down and it tucks in behind this and you can kind of see right there how it's tucking in behind it and they seal this edge along here. And you just want to keep making sure that this stays sealed and has a good, um, good seal running along it so it's not going to leak and for this I just use this um, ProFlex RV flexible sealant it's crystal clear it says it's got ex excellent adhesion and it's paintable so notice these slide toppers have pretty much reached the end of their life probably need to be replaced um, eventually Probably sooner than later, but for now I might just run some awning tape or some sort of repair tape on there for now, just to let it help it last a little bit longer. See if that'll help. Well, the cats did pretty good last night. I didn't get much sleep. <laughs> um, about four of them all wanted to be on the bed 
and Sunshine decided to play gatekeeper because she wanted to be the only one on the bed. And so she was growling half the night at all the other cats. <laughs> but they did at some point settle down, fall asleep, and I actually got maybe a couple hours. Um, this guy, he slept in the front seat, driver's seat. That seems to be his favorite spot. I think probably most of the night. So all we have left to do now is pull in all the slides. We're gonna remove this blanket from the dash. We put that up there to try to protect that dash from kitty cat claws. And everything else I think is ready. <laughs> so the way we're gonna do this is the four that get along are going to ride back here. And then Boomer will be in the front that way we only have one kitty to worry about when we're going in and out this door on the road. So they're all kind of secured. And I'm gonna start pulling this slide in and hopefully they won't freak out. Closing in on you guys, it's okay. It's a lot of noise. You're all right, you're all right. You're okay. <laughs> now it's much smaller and they're like what happened <laughs> I have the blind open because they do seem to be more comfortable being able to see out yeah <laughs> all right so now we'll do the front slide Actually, a pretty good amount of room in here with the slides in now the kitchen would be cramped there's one drawer that you can't get into when the slides are in so we just make sure we there's nothing in there that we think we'll need on the road but everything else you can get into you can open this to get to the trash and that sort of thing but all right so we're almost ready to head out it'll be interesting to see what they do when we turn the ignition over um, <laughs> and we'll, we'll stop along the road and let you know how it goes. Yeah, they aren't bothered by that too much. What's going on, Homer? Huh? Homer, come here. Come here, Homer. You're okay. He's okay. We're on our way. I'm gonna get up in the front seat and put my seatbelt on here in a second. The cats are doing okay. They're a little nervous. In 11 miles, turn right to merge onto I-75 North toward Tampa. So yeah, the, the cats were nervous, but they did surprisingly well. They, they all kind of found their spot along the side of the bed. Radar, who was the one that was most freakish yesterday, he's, he's still on the bed. He doesn't seem to bother him as much. The movement doesn't. Um, how you doing, Kevin? I'm fine. <laughs> We're on our way. First trip in the RV. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, we filled up. It was um, 49 and a half gallons. It was $200. It was 402 a gallon, so that wasn't too bad. About a week ago, is 439 a gallon, so it's actually come down a little bit. But yeah, we got a full tank, and we're ready to keep moving. Well, we're at camp, <laughs> <laughs> man. So it was supposed to be, I think, two and a half hour drive, right? Was mm -hmm. it? But it ended up taking us about three, three and a half hours because yeah. there was congestion, and we made a stop. Besides getting gas, we stopped at a rest area. And they were able to, the kitties were able to get some water. Uh, which ones would drink? A lot of them were too nervous because they just didn't like the drive. But they they all just kind of hunkered down. They found the spot and they kind of just stayed in that spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, you can see Toby. He's looking around, getting used to things. Sunshine already did. She checked everything <laughs> out and she's uh, settling down. Radar's up in the window and watching all the activity outside. 
we are at Hillsboro River State Park. Now you guys I, that have been watching my channel for a while may remember I actually have been at this park with the van, but we will show you around in the next video. Uh, tonight we are just going to kind of relax. We may take a walk or a bike ride, but we're not going to stay gone long. We want to just let the kitties get get relaxed, settled in, and then we have a nice weekend planned. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we might even make cookies tonight in the oven. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope if you have cats and are wondering how they would do in an RV, this somehow kind of gave you an idea what to expect, you know? They, they're pretty adaptable. Most cats are pretty adaptable. And um, as long as they're with us, they seem to be happy. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see you next video. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.